to make certain that everyone knows um, our gratitude to Representatives Patman and Barnes for voting for Jobs Ohio 1. And as we continue on this new chapter, additional chapter, for economic development in Ohio, I look forward to our entire House coming before this bill and supporting them for all the people of Ohio as we look at economic development in very, very strong ways. I'm excited and very pleased that um, we are here today sharing the details on this bill, and I think it's a win-win for all the people of Ohio. Thank you for being here today, and I will turn it back to my fellow representatives here. Right, we'll be happy to uh, take any questions that you might have at this time. Under this bill, uh, will there be required for cuts to the staffing and Um, not as a specified element of the bill, certainly, and they've gone through um, a process over the course of the last uh, year or so now uh, in this transition that I think has taken a closer look at uh, the staffing requirements within DOD even prior to this transition, and I think that'll be determined administratively within the new agency that we go forward, but it's not something specified in the legislation itself. Can you explain the provisions in the bill related to public records and uh, why those changes are needed? Is that also the case with tax credit authority? I mean, are they essentially rubber, a rubber stamp right now? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the changes in here that, that uh, specify the sunsets for the various commissions, I think were recommended as a result of, of redundancy and inefficiency that, that was found in the existing process over a number of years. And I think that's really the purpose in, in trying to streamline so that we can you know, get the loans to the process in a, in a more expeditious manner. And, uh, and really just streamline government. So I think it's, it's basically the same process and the same rationale that applies to the sunsetting of each of these commissions. I guess on, on tax credit authority, but it, from, if I understand your explanation, companies can move ahead with projects before the tax credit authority actually signs off on the incentive. Is that, did I understand that correctly? And if that's so, why bother having the tax credit authority at that point? Well, under the current structure, the business expansions have been delayed due to the current processes, so it's allowing them to get moving. I wouldn't necessarily suggest that they have approved the ultimate um, authority, but they have the ability to start moving on the project. What happens if the tax credit authority then rejects it? Um, that's a good question. I just want to make sure that we have, uh, we have a good understanding of that, that element of this. Um, you know, my, my understanding is that there are uh, there have been delays in the process uh, under, under the current uh, 
structure that's in place right now. And you know, going forward, I think we'll have to take a look at what, what that process would be beyond uh, if there would not be a rejection of the approval going forward. So we're taking a note on that as well. We can get back to you. But you know, our understanding right now is that uh, that uh, you know, we're trying to avoid delays in that, that part of the business process by, by streamlining this element of it. Is there a reason why you went kind of retroactive instead of maybe just requiring the, the tax authority to meet more often? I don't know that there's a specific reason why this was the recommendation. What kind of timeline are you looking at? Are you hoping to get this done and signed in the law before summer? Yeah, this is certainly a priority for, uh, for the caucus. We want to get this thing moving as quickly as we can. I think we, we may already have our, our first hearing scheduled in the next week or so here, but uh, I would defer, as always, to the speaker in terms of the timeline on this, but it's certainly a priority for, uh, for the caucus, for the administration, and mostly moving along. You mentioned changes to the Best Ohio program. Are these just eligibility type changes, or is the funding amounts going to, to, to change at all? The funding amounts will not be addressed in this bill. They've actually been moved to the Finance Committee at this time, let me see here, though. Um, in specifics to the, let me see here. There are several changes, and I have them here for you. And if I can just, okay. Okay, so basically, it adds to the definition of small business enterprise to specify that the entity must be in good standing with the Secretary of State and cannot be engaged in illegal activities. Adds to the definition of eligible investor to specify that the investor cannot have any outstanding liabilities owed to the state. Makes a language cha change to say the director may issue investment certificates instead of shall. Ensures that affiliated entities, assets, and sales are included when determining whether entity an entity is a small business enterprise. Adds an application fee in order to provide funding for the administration of this program. Clarifies that an investor making an investment under this program may only claim one tax credit for the amount invested, even if the investment also met the requirements of another tax credit program. Outlines the order of receiving applications in order for more efficient processing of applications and issuing certificates. The certificates will be reserved in the order the applications are received, but will be issued only when the investor and small business enterprise have qualified and the application process is complete. And lastly, requires that the entity receiving the qualifying investment report to the director of the Department of Development the number of jobs or the number of high jobs retained and or created as a result of the qualifying investment. The legislation also requires the director of development of or the director of the Department of Development to maintain an Recording of the number of Ohio jobs retained and are created under this program. Sorry for that last portion is redundant. The funding amounts aren't changing for the best of What was that? The funding amounts aren't changing for the best of Ohio. I know that it changes from, uh, from 153. In our understanding, the funding amounts for Invest Ohio are not changing. In, in specifics to this bill. And this, this job creation report, is, are they required to up front say how many jobs and then is this something that they'd have to report later that they met that or is this just a general, here's what we were able to do with this money? I believe that it's um, retrospective in accordance with how many they have maintained or accrued in the process. I don't believe they have to up front um, suggest how many specifically they will create. Tours of Ohio, can you describe a little, little bit about what is, how is that different from what kind of things we're doing now? I can, yeah. The, uh, the main change on this, I think, really is, uh, is a greater focus on tourism, first of all. But I think the establishment of the, uh, the advisory board is, is really the big issue here, so that there are better strategies and, and uh, promotion concepts in place for really for how to promote tourism for the state. And so in that respect, we're you know, similar to the way the Jobs of Ohio itself is structured with um, experts really in economic development from various corporations around the state. This will also look to those who actually have a stake and expertise in a, 
and professional background near tourism for the state um, so that we can have input from them and, uh, and try to figure out better ways to promote uh, tourism for the state. So I think that's the main change is really to have an advisory board that, that will work on this and provide professional expertise on those matters. Is there a funding source? Sure. What else do you have there? I was just going to comment on the first question if you don't answer. In regards to that particular investment, I think that it is a rather modest investment that the state has made at five million, is that correct? Yes. For the pilot program. And I would say that with a one dollar investment and a fourteen dollar return that we've seen in the last year with tourism and the tourism related um, industry that it's certainly a wise investment on the state's behalf, yet we see promising results and we don't see a point at which we climax in those numbers. And so I think when states surrounding us, like Michigan, spend $29 million in tourism, that this is wise for us to invest in this area and start looking at uh, new opportunities to bring revenue into the state. And this certainly will be doing that and Representative DeVilla hit on that, but I think that we'd be completely remiss if we didn't get Representative Grossman a moment to talk about this. She has hosted our tourism caucuses, so <laughs> we have to rope her in a little bit and let her explain because this has been a passion for us for a while. Thank you, Representative. <laughs> um, you know, as the representative chair, when you're looking at a 14-1 return on investment, um, I know this morning when I turned on the news, I think I saw four different states advertising in Ohio. And those are dollars that are leaving our, our state that could very well remain here and uh, help the fourth largest industry in the state of Ohio. So, yes, this has been a passion of mine, and uh, I'm very pleased today to, to see it being formally uh, pursued as a priority for our caucus. And again, as I shared earlier, I'm hoping that uh, both sides of the aisle will understand the importance and the benefit to all the people of Ohio if we're able to uh, stimulate and uh, grow tourism in Ohio. It's more than one day, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it's, and I, I would say also that it's, it's more than one part of the state, certainly. This is something that has a dramatic impact on all parts of Ohio. And it's something that I, uh, I would see members from both parties getting behind uh, to help promote this type of industry all throughout the state. Sure, the five million is NGRF, or is it some other dedicated source? You know how it's put together? Was it out of GRF? I believe so. I think the initial, I think the initial amount was. Um, and you know that, I think it's another area that could be <coughs> revisited down the road in terms of whether that funding is at an adequate level moving forward to help continue promoting this particular part of, uh, of the budget and program. And I believe that this program is also, also ultimately designed to be dependent upon itself. So if this group is not successful in this current budgetary cycle and this five-year pilot program, they will not, no longer exist. So they will cease to exist if they're not able to maintain and grow their funding by bringing the revenue in from outside the state. Is this the current structure and this is the proposed structure? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Any other questions or are we off the hook? <laughs> no. Well, thank you all again. We appreciate your, uh, your attendance today as we start to move on this very important bill for the state of Ohio. Thank, thank you, you for your support.